Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to talk about the Saturn ingress in Pisces and we're going to take into account this three years in which Saturn is going to stay in this zodiac sign and this is a very uh, major and important shift for Saturn since um, since 2017, really late 2017, it was December, Saturn entered Capricorn, then uh, Aquarius, and they're both ruled by Saturn. So Saturn was in uh, its domicile for five years and a half, almost. And so this shift is quite important and quite dramatic for Saturn since Saturn is going to leave uh, his zodiac signs and this means that Saturn is, is not going to be as strong and of course Saturn is not very comfortable in, in the water element, in water signs. So let's take a look at the overall energy of Saturn in Pisces. Okay, now I'd like to start with this theme uh this topic that really Saturn in Pisces uh, points us at and that is spiritual responsibility. Now why is that? Uh, well, first of all, Saturn is our super ego. It represents the rule giver, the voice in our head telling us you have to do this or you can do that. And Pisces is a very spiritual zodiac sign is a zodiac sign of mysticism, transcendence. And so here we really have the topic of taking responsibility in the zodiac sign which represents our connection to the divine. So with Saturn in Pisces, we are not supposed to use our spiritual path as a form of escapism to really not tackle, not confront the real problems, the real issues of our spiritual path, but rather to become more responsible and more aware of the importance that our spiritual path has in regard to the world, because we're going to improve ourselves, improve uh, our external circumstances, hence improving uh, the world. So this is a very important theme that Saturn in Pisces is bringing to us. To the point that this responsibility, this sense of seriousness really that Saturn in Pisces brings um, can resonate to this image, the image of sacrifice. Now this is important to uh, acknowledge really because Pisces is the zodiac sign of Christianity. Pisces is a mutable water sign. It is very sensitive. Um, Pisces are empaths, right? And they resonate with uh, suffering, with people in sorrow. And so they resonate with a spirituality that has to do with pain and suffering. And of course, Christianity, and in particular, the, the image of the cross is precisely this. We have God sacrificing right, uh, himself. We have the Christ sacrificing himself for uh, the good of humanity, right? So this sense of responsibility brought by Saturn can also become this, this sacrifice or the theme, the general theme of sacrifice. So we don't need to be dramatic here, but definitely with responsibility comes sacrifice as well. So we need to understand what we have to let behind, to leave behind, in order to move on in our spiritual path. So the question would be, what are you going to sacrifice for your spiritual path and your self-improvement? Now, this is very important to realize and to understand, especially because this sense of responsibility is not limited to our spiritual path, but also to our mental health as well. So I'm not talking about the spirit now, but about the soul, the psyche, our well-being. Now, we need to really understand where our emotions are getting in the way. Saturn is very cold, it is a very cold planet and um, it is very disciplined as well. So 
Uh, what Saturn wants us to do here is really understand where our hypersensitivity, our emotions are getting in the way, so to speak, and they're not allowing us to um, really be um, stable and integrate, right? So this is very important, not only to address the spirit, but also the soul and understanding that taking responsibility of our soul, of our mental health as well, is going to improve ourselves and the world. And so we are almost called here to make a choice. Saturn in Pisces is all about disillusionment, really. So it's like Saturn is asking of us, do you want to continue living in, in this fantasy? Or do you want to wake up? and see reality for what it is, right? So we um, might be challenged not to wake up and not to recognize really what Saturn wants us from us, but the result would be indulging in this world of fantasies, in this dreaming world that is not going to be as pleasant as before. Uh, and this is because Saturn is the planet of fear. So if we don't take responsibility, if we don't wake up and embrace reality, what Saturn does is this, is going to say, okay, you can continue this dream, but what about these nightmares? So we may become uh, paranoid with Saturn in Pisces because indulging in these fantasies, well, these fantasies are going to become dark. Um, a not a very good place to dwell in, right? So, and this is because Saturn wants us to wake up, basically. And if we continue the dream, the dream is going to be fearful and dark. Um, and this can also um, connect to the general theme of having fear of the spirit, being scared of the spirit. Uh, because we know that being on a spiritual path definitely takes us towards altered or higher, I should rather say higher states of consciousness, and they can be quite scary, right? But if we are responsible, if we take our spiritual path seriously, we ulti ultimately are going to uh, reach these states that are new, they may be scary, but we need to... Um, yeah, to do, start dealing with them, right? Now, in general, Pisces um, is a zodiac sign that is related to altered states of consciousness. And of course, we can use meditation to reach higher states of consciousness. But in general, Pisces has to do with altered states of consciousness. They can be higher, they can be lower. And especially lower states of consciousness, they are conveyed by substances, by drugs or alcohol, right? Here we find the signification of Saturn as the planet of deprivation, of not having or renouncing to these substances. Maybe because we like to drink sometimes or, uh, well, drugs are not uh, exactly ideal to reach higher states of consciousness. And so what we, um, what is, this is the question, what is our relationship with these substances? Because they can be meds, right? So we may need them to cope with these all these emotions, so the mutable water of Pisces, they can be very challenging, they can make us hypersensitive. So sometimes we may need meds, right? But the question would be, what's your relationship with these substances? They are helping you, are you relying too much on them? Uh, do you really need them? These kind of questions is what Saturn is bringing to us. So again, being more responsible. And since Saturn is the planet of uh, laws in general, this can also uh, be an indication of um, a change in terms of legal rules or laws that are going to regulate um, drugs specifically or, um, yeah, psycho 
uh, pharmacy and meds in general. So this can definitely happen during this uh, transit. Now, another important theme that is uh, very, um, it is becoming a, a real issue nowadays, it has to do with uh, art and creativity. Um, Pisces, in Pisces, we find the exaltation of Venus, the planet of beauty and love, of course, but the planet of beauty, the planet of creativity, the planet of, of arts. And nowadays, uh, we are really witnessing uh, what, what's happening with um, artificial intelligence because AI is changing the way that we relate with art. And it is also something that is damaging the artists in general, the artist community. And uh, we can uh, see nowadays people that are starting talking about it. Is it fair that these artificial intelligences are, are trained with free images, images that were created by artists and that uh, should be, these artists should be paid, right? So we have copywriting, we have uh, in general uh, legal movements that are trying to make artificial intelligences trained only with images that are copyrighted and so that artists can be uh, paid and acknowledged, right? Because they are talking about stealing, like artificial intelligences are stealing our work and they are sh like twisting it, they are recreating it, but definitely that's our work and they're stealing our creativity, they're stealing our work. And so in legal terms, this transit can be very interesting to see what's going to happen in this regard because Saturn may introduce in this world of creativity and, um, and art a new regulations, basically. Now, moving on, it's interesting noticing that Saturn is also the planet of aging and it is entering the last zodiac sign. So the zodiac starts with Aries and then it ends with Pisces. So we have after 30 years, Saturn really takes roughly 29 years to complete the, the cycle around the zodiac. We have a generational change here. And this is interesting because who says that a generation is starting and one is ending, right? We have 25, maybe 30 years. Now, a way to do that is really referring to the cycle of Saturn around the zodiac. And so we can expect the perception of a big generational change. That's another Saturn in Pisces signification. Now, in terms of geopolitics, we have a very, very interesting uh, meaning brought by Saturn in Pisces, because Saturn is the planet of boundaries, the planet of confinement. And Pisces is a sign that represents the, the ocean, the sea, that is by definition without bounds, without boundaries, right? Well, not exactly, because uh, we know that yeah, we have uh, a division in terms of who owns this part of the sea or who is controlling this part of the sea. And what's happening right now is um, a real containment strategy that the US is perpetrating. They're trying to surround uh, China by sea. And they're doing that because China is improving um, yeah, their army and they are basically expanding on the surrounding uh, seas. And in this regard, the United States are trying on a geopolitical level to contain um, China expansion. And so this is crucial because in my opinion, it's going to lead us towards what we can call, um, well, a major conflict. And later on, we're going to see that this is going to be triggered at least in 2025. So this is the chart of Saturn Ingress in Pisces. And as you can see, it's almost identical uh, to the, um, yeah, the chart of the full moon in, uh, in Virgo. Uh, why? Because it, uh, the, 
the ingress of Saturn in Pisces happened like right before, just a few hours after the opposition of the luminaries, Sun and Moon, and this is another way to say right after the full Moon in, um, in Virgo. Now, as you can see in this chart, Saturn just entered Pisces together with other three planets because we find in Pisces, of course, Neptune, which has been there like for uh, a lot, uh, the Sun and Mercury. And this is a stellium. It is um, um, a, really um, a set of planets in the same zodiac sign, Pisces, which is the sign of uh, mutable water, a very unstable and dramatic and sensitive water. So this means that this uh, moment when Saturn is entering Pisces is quite dramatic because four planets out of ten are inside Pisces. So we have a lot of Pisces energy. And why do we have all this drama? Because as you can see here, not only we have the full moon, which as you may know, the full moon is the moment when the moon, representing in general emotions, reaches it, its peak, right, in, in terms of light. But we have the planet of war, the god of war, Mars, closing this opposition with two squares in what it's called a T-square configuration. Now, this is important because Mars is not only the god of war, but during this month, we saw the Neanderthal comet reaching the planet Mars and basically with its trajectory crossing almost precisely Mars. I don't know if you saw a bunch of pictures online, uh, quite beautiful pictures. You could see Mars, this red planet, and um, the Neanderthal comet, this green comet that wanted almost to uh, jump inside Mars. It was like a, um, a beautiful picture. But comets are, um, well, in astrology, they are not um, favorable. Usually they appear in times of crisis. So if you want to learn more about it, you can check my video about the Neanderthal comet. But basically, uh, this comet was pointing at this risk of this war that it may really drag humanity down to a state of consciousness that is represented by the Neanderthals. So basically, a previous state of evolution. So not going on with uh, the evolution, but really falling back. And Mars is very important in this chart because it rules Jupiter and Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces. So we have a chain of command here. We have um, Mars ruling Jupiter and Jupiter ruling the stellium basically and ruling Saturn as well. And as you can see, Jupiter is in Aries, um, which is, of course, ruled uh, by Mars, and it represents the archetype of, of the warrior. It's like among the 12 zodiac sign, uh, Aries is the warrior sign, right? Um, Jupiter has to do with philosophy uh, and ideals. So we have Eastern philosophies of martial arts. We have... Um, ideals of strength, ideals of fighting, ideals of proving that we are strong, that we are worth, worthy. Um, and this is not um, ideal, again, right? Because we have this massive amount of water, of drama, of emotion, pointing at planets that are basically talking about conflict. So during a full moon, so definitely not um, favorable for, for the peace in general. Now, we can use astrocartography to see where in the world this event, the uh, Saturn ingress in Pisces, is going to be more powerful. Now, as you can see here, um, we have these lines, this red line, this yellow line, this green and blue lines. They represent the, the points in the world where Saturn is going to be on the ascendant when it's going to enter Pisces 
or on the descendant. So Saturn was about to rise here in this red line or to set in this yellow line precisely in that moment. And we have Saturn and the MC, the midheaven, so at noon or Saturn on the IC, so it was uh, anti-culminating basically. We have the culmination and the anti-culmination of Saturn. And these four lines represent the angles of a chart, the four most important spots or powerful spots um, in, a, in a chart. And this means that, for example, uh, when Saturn enters Pisces, it's going to be rising on the Ascendant uh, in Los Angeles or it's going to be setting in St. Petersburg or Moscow. Um, so we can really understand that these cities pointed out here in, the, in this picture are going to feel this ingress more massively. Uh, in particular, I believe that Los Angeles being a center of creativity, artists, is going to be important in regards to this process of, you know, art artists versus um, AI, basically. Whereas, of course, we have the war um, touching two of the most important um, cities uh, in Russia and as you can see this line is crossing the Donbass region which is crucial for this war. Uh, it's not going to cross Kyiv however Saturn is going to be in the seventh house. Now the ascend the descendant is the cusp or beginning of the seventh house. In general the seventh house is the house of other people or other countries in this case because we're talking about countries. And so having all this drama and this planet of, you know, it's a malefic, Saturn is a malefic planet in general, um, having this transit happening, this ingress happening in the seventh house, the house of other countries or the house of open enemies, this is another classical way to interpret the seventh house is not ideal at all, meaning that the situation is going to, yeah, to be even more dramatic. And then we have other other cities. We have Baghdad and Riyadh, and then we have Azaikawa in Japan and uh, Melbourne in Australia. Now, um, Moving on, we can take a look at Saturn um, aspects uh, that Saturn is going to basically uh, make during these uh, five years. Like, well, as you can see, this table has five columns. Each column is one year. And in late 2020, more specifically uh, during uh, winter solstice 2020, we had the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which is one of the two things that I want to talk about in this, uh, looking at this picture, because we are going to see uh, a development in the Jupiter-Saturn cycle as Saturn is moving through Pisces. So this is one of the first of the two things that I want to address here. And the other one is this conjunction, the um, Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Very important, very dramatic, um, and we're going to talk about that uh, later. So first of all, this cycle, the Jupiter-Saturn cycle, is extremely important. It is important precisely because these two planets, uh, they conjoin every 12, uh, not 12, every 20 years. And they make this conjunction in zodiac signs of the same element. And back in 2020, what happened was that we had a major shift in the element in which these two planets conjoin. Now, for roughly 200 years, Saturn and Jupiter they were making conjunction in Earth signs, okay? From 2020, they started making conjunctions 
in air science and precisely in Aquarius. So 2020 was extremely important because in terms of two planets that were, especially in ancient astrology, highly regarded to really understand uh, what was happening on a more collective level, we can understand that we are like fading, we are, we are transitioning from uh, an era of the earth element, an element that has to do with matter, to an era of the air element. And the air element has to do with the mind and to humanity, social interactions, especially because this conjunction took place in Aquarius that has to do with the future, with humanity, with humanitarian ideals, definitely very, very important. Now, as you can see from 2023, we're going to experience two milestones in the Saturn-Jupiter cycle. The first is their sextile in light blue here. So in mid-2023, this sextile is going to start and then repeat itself again uh, in early 2024. So the conjunction is like having this, a new seed prepared, right? And the sextile is having this seed sprouting and manifesting uh, what it is going to do. So it's like hey, we can see actually what this new cycle is going to look like because it's showing us uh, its nature. It's like having a seed and not knowing what the seed is. And then you have the seed sprouting and you can tell, oh, that's a rose, right? Or that's uh, a tree or whatever. And then in late 2024 and early 2025, like the first half of 2025, we're going to... Uh, have this other important moment, milestone of this cycle where the two planets are going to make a square. And this is the first crisis of the cycle. So 2023 is going to be important as well as early 2024 to understand this new cycle, precisely what it's going to be like. And 2024 and 2025 are going to tell us um, what's the, the issue that this new cycle is going to bring to the table. Um, we already had some insights about it because we had, for instance, with this conjunction happening, um, several improvements, technological improvements in terms of energy. Uh, Aquarius is the zodiac sign of the, of the stars, basically. And we literally had this massive improvement in uh, uh, nuclear fusion technology and creating basically a little sun and an energy that is um, a sort of energy of the stars, so to speak. So I think uh, this improvement mainly has to do with uh, energy and how we deal with this um, with with resources in general to to get more energy. So nuclear energy is going to be one of the main main themes, and this is going to be revealed uh, late in 2023. <clears throat> Sorry, and in 2024, we are going to witness to the, um, in general, the um, challenges that this new cycle is going to bring uh, us. But the most important year of Saturn in Pisces season is going to be this conjunction with um, Neptune, which is going to start with Saturn in Pisces, but this conjunction is going to take place actually with Saturn and Neptune in Aries. So let's take a look at this conjunction because it's extremely important. Now these are the graphical ephemeris of Saturn and uh, Jupiter. And uh, we want to really focus on 2025 because if we add in the ephemeris um, if we add the uh, North Lunar Node, here we go. As you can see, in 2025, we are going to have eclipses, both eclipses of uh, the e Eclipse Season 1, in taking place uh, in conjunction with Saturn. So why 2025 is so important for Saturn in Pisces? Now, reason number one, because... 
eclipses are going to take place in conjunction with Saturn. Very dramatic. Eclipses are all about sudden change happening and they are going to involve Saturn, right? And secondly, because during this, um, well, during this year, like a couple of months later, really, we're going to have the Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Now, here on the screen, you can see a bunch of um, dates where Saturn was in Pisces. I'm not going to comment all of them. Of course, now I'm going to focus on the uh, Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Um, if you have any insight about these dates with Saturn in Pisces, please uh, leave them in the comment. I'm very interested to hear uh, what you have to say. I'm sure that uh, you're looking at 9035, 9038, because it was very messy, right? In terms of, uh, yeah, geopolitics. Um, but yeah, so... Here in uh, 2025, we're going to have the Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Actually, this is going to take place in uh, Aries. And the last time that this conjunction happened was 9089. And the conjunction was taking place in Capricorn. And it basically, we have this uh, very powerful image of the, the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall. Um, that is a symbol that is basically describing precisely what this conjunction is all about because Saturn, as I mentioned, is all about boundaries, containment, limits, limitations as well, whereas Neptune is um, a solvent technically or alchemically is a, a, an acid, a solvent meaning that it dissolves forms, it uh, destructure things, where Saturn wants to structure things, so they are the opposites. So we had a wall here falling down, crumbling down. Uh, the wall was dissolved by the power of Neptune. And this uh, dissolution took place in Capricorn, being Capricorn a zodiac sign of the empire, meaning that that was the end of the Russian empire, basically, right? So uh, Russia and United States, basically, they uh, split Europe in two. Uh, half of Europe was under the influence of the U.S. and the other half under the influence of uh, the U uh, of the uh, of yours. And, and then uh, this moment was important because it was like this empire crumbling down, this war, uh, this wall, sorry, this wall crumbling down. And now we are building another wall because Saturn in Pisces is building a containment wall, so to speak, um, on the sea, which is Pisces, right on the ocean for China. And... Well, things are not going to turn out well because this wall is going to be destroyed or dissolved by this conjunction that is in Aries, Aries being the warrior. Now, what I can see here is that we're going to have in 2025 a major conflict between, um, between United States and China. And this, the result of this conflict is going to be that this wall that the U.S. is trying to build together with the allies, so Japan, um, Australia, uh, and so on, right? Uh, it's going to, to be dissolved by, uh, by what? By forces of Aries, forces of conflict, of war, right? And uh, this is not something that I am like 100% sure, right? But uh, there are some experts that are saying that in 2025, we should be ready to really uh, see this conflict manifesting more because this conflict is real. It is happening, uh, but it's not as visible as what's happening in Ukraine. But experts, or at least what I can understand from them are saying that in 2025 we have this conflict, if not manifesting, definitely reaching a very important um, milestone. Yeah.
Okay, thanks for watching. This is all I have for now for this um, transit of Saturn in Pisces. So what can we do? We can become more responsible in regard to our inner world, our psyche and our spiritual journey and take ourselves seriously because what's happening outside is a reflection of what's happening inside of us, meaning that we're not um, working on an esoteric inner level enough to prevent these things from manifesting, right? And the uh, Neanderthal comet was a sort of warning. Do you want to uh, de-evolve and become like the Neanderthal, right? Um, of course not. So what we can do is take ourselves seriously and work to better ourselves and to make the world a better place. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, please like this video, uh, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell and share it with uh, friends or family that may be interested. And see you next time in the next video. Have a good week.